I guess, first of all, there's a lot of conclusions that are drawn in the medical literature that are simply unwarranted. So if, for example, we have a look at the Sydney Diet Heart Study or the Minnesota Coronary Experiment, which are both from the late 60s, early 70s, they actually found that removing saturated fat from the diet and replacing it with polyunsaturated seed oils was actually deleterious to health. And yet for reasons only known to the investigators, and I think we can actually uh, paraphrase a little bit here because one of the investigators of one of these studies was actually asked before he died in an interview how they published their results. And the simple fact is they delayed publication significantly. And even when they originally published, I think the Minnesota Coronary Experiment was published 16 years later after the conclusion of the study, they didn't provide data on all-cause mortality. And the study investigator simply said, we didn't like the results we got, so we didn't publish. The Sydney Diet Heart Study, they never published the all-cause mortality data either. And the only reason we actually know the results of these studies today is because somebody went and dug out the results from old basements. They actually discovered them, decoded them, used a, you know, reinterpreted all the results according to uh, good scientific methodology. And lo and behold, we have the results. Large scale randomized control trials show that eliminating saturated fat from the diet in place of polyunsaturated fats, that is reducing your saturated fats, actually increased mortality. And we would never know this. Um, this was good quality science that was destined to be lost to history. The Women's Health Initiative is another example, a little bit more surprising because it's in the modern era. They actually had a largest randomized control trial in the world, 700 million US dollars, and they had a, uh, a group of females who went on a low saturated fat diet. And the only statistically significant finding from the whole study was a 26% increased risk of complications such as angina and heart attacks and so on and so forth. And given that that was the only finding of the whole study, you would think it would be front and center of the results, front and center of the conclusion mentioned in every press conference. Well, strike out on all three accounts. It wasn't in the results table, it wasn't in the conclusion, it was never mentioned in any of the press conferences. It was written in obscure language on page 661 of the reporting journal. This is just absolutely amazing. You know, we have solid science and it's literally buried. And we have plenty of other examples of this going on. We have misinterpretation of bad science. So in 2020, I came across a paper that studied cholesterol supplementation and atorvastatin, which is a statin, a cholesterol lowering medication use in New Zealand white rabbits. Clearly, you know, has no applicability at all for humans. And yet in the conclusion, the authors of this paper suggested their results did apply to human patients. This is 2020, and we're using rabbit data to inform our use of statins. There was another study that actually looked at statin use, and it found that it actually increased the incidence of diabetes. So if I actually can quote, they said that uh, it was a New England Journal, actually this is a few years old, 2008, but it was a statin trial. Uh, they found that there was a significant increase in physician reported incidence of diabetes, and there was a statistically significant increase in HbA1c, which is a marker of average blood glucose levels. The authors also acknowledged that prior to this time, there were independent studies that confirmed worsening sugar control for at least three different types of statin medication. So on the basis of this, they had statistically significant findings. Now, 
My understanding and everybody's understanding of statistical significance is that it represents findings that are unlikely to be due to chance. We want to take out the element of chance and we do that to a, a, you know, a reasonable degree. Still, in the conclusion, these authors said, well, this worsening sugar control could reflect the play of chance. That fires the logic of having statistically significant findings. They simply could not compel themselves to look at the science and understand the science and say, oh, maybe statins are bad for diabetes. Maybe this is the evidence. Nope, they just said, oh, look, it's probably a random chance. Never mind that it reached statistical significance. And if we have a look at how else the data is abused, so we have these expert papers. So there's a problem where we have something called uh, eminence-based medicine, and that's totally contrary to evidence-based medicine. Evidence-based medicine means we look at the data, we draw a conclusion. Eminence-based medicine means that we put our trust in other people, not the data. We actually allow eminent people, experts, if you will, to provide us with their conclusion because they're clearly smarter than we, and we can accept at face value everything they say. So there was a paper from the American Diabetes Association, which is very, very heavily cited, and it's on the use of statins in diabetes. And I had a lot of people tweeting this paper at me and emailing me this paper and saying, see, this proves that statins are good in diabetes. I went and looked at the references. There were six references on this paper. Three of the references did not include all cause mortality as a measure of outcome. That is, they couldn't, they didn't actually ask the question, let alone answer the question, whether taking statins for diabetes, patients with diabetes made them live longer. The three studies that they included that did actually ask the question about all cause mortality, they all had insignificant findings. Not one of the references in this paper showed what they said it did. And yet this is a very heavily cited position statement from an expert body that recommends the use of statins in diabetes. And this is just madness. And if people actually understood that the wool was literally being pulled over their eyes, you can't trust the conclusion. You can't trust these guidelines. You can't trust these expert bodies. You have to look at the raw data. When you look at the raw data, the truth is very, very different.